Hello, I'm Casey Aiken, and this is 21 This Week. Coming up next, national attention focuses on Montgomery County and its sanctuary policies after two illegal immigrant teens allegedly rape a 14-year-old student at Rockville High School. Why did Larry Hogan flip positions on the fracking ban? Will it help him or hurt him politically? And how messed up is our health care system? Can anyone fix it? And finally, why are the Democrats going to filibuster Neil Gorsuch? Stay tuned. Our panel of insiders will give you the story behind the story. We're joined by the former president of the Montgomery County branch of the NAACP, Henry Hailstock. The oracle of Democratic politics, Sam Statlin. Secretary of the Maryland Republican Party, Mark Unkefer, and born-again Republican and former candidate for Congress, Liz Matori. Stay tuned for these stories and more on the next 21 This Week. The alleged gang rape of a 14-year-old girl at Rockville High School by two illegal immigrants, 18-year-old Henry Sanchez from Guatemala and 17-year-old Jose Montano from El Salvador, was so shocking in nature that the national media spotlight has been focused on Montgomery County and its sanctuary county policies that many believe contributed to the crime. Increasingly, the fact that Montgomery County openly flouts federal law regarding immigration and by doing so makes it easier for undocumented criminals to go unmolested in public has become a recognized issue. Outraged parents concerned about the safety of their children have been demanding answers from a school administration that continues to justify the placement of these two undocumented students as freshmen because of a Supreme Court decision that requires public school systems accept all children who seek admittance. Henry, there are so many questions raised about this case, but for many, the more disturbing aspect of it is the reaction of county officials who, while denouncing the crime, pledge to cooperate with immigration officials, but they fail to acknowledge that their policies of openly encouraging acceptance of thousands of unaccompanied immigrants into our community over the past 18 months allowed these two criminals into our community. So have the actions of our county executive and our county council actually endangered our community? Oh, well, first of all, it's really a horrific incident that occurred and I really, um, hope the best for the family, especially the young lady, and I hope she gets the proper help to, you know, uh, to get through this because it was horrific. I also um, am hoping that the school system really works uh, to resolve the issue uh, in the school as far as placement of monitors in, in the hallway because I feel that that wasn't done enough. Uh, we have some schools in Prince George's County that have cameras everywhere and can uh, depict any actions um, that occur in the system. But I, I feel that uh, we are doing a disjustice uh, to a number of people here in Montgomery County as well as the United States by just singling out uh, individuals. We're looking at bad people who create this, uh, this incident, particularly uh, looking at Montgomery County. In the past years, we had 259 forced uh, rapes here in the county alone. Now, we can't say all of that was uh, done by uh, illegal uh, Henry, aliens, not, but it was, done, the question. it was done with bad people. We, we, we are, have talked on this show we, repeatedly we, about you, undocumented I would aliens like to, I would like to admitted finish. into our county. Well, like you're not finish. answering the question that I, I asked you, I will answer the question in, so, in so my way, talk, if let, you will let's allow talk me about to. about the culpability of the county council and the county well, executive you, you put, bringing, bringing undocumented aliens into our community you as are part of the Baber. Two different issues. You're bringing up two different issues that I have to address because you're, you're trying to make it all in one, but there are two different issues, and I'm dealing with the first one, the horrific act that occurred, first of all, and you're trying to make it as though it no, was well, a I'm legislation asking, how that they, occurred. How did, how did these two individuals get in Montgomery County? Liz, a letter, letter okay. sent to parents from Rockville High School officials said, ensuring a safe, secure, and welcoming learning environment for all of our students is a top priority. Our staff remains vigilant in the monitoring of our school each and every day, but did these schools fail to protect this young girl? Honestly, Casey, I'll answer your first question and the second question. Um, that's one of the reasons why I have the Democrat Party here in Montgomery County, is that I do believe that the elected officials have created this culture of corruption 
this culture of, um, quite frankly, created outlaws of people who are undocumented. Whether you will call them undocumented, illegal, unlawful, you've already told people, thousands of people, come on in, we're not going to do anything. That's and so this, true. hold on, so hold on, hold on, I'm answering the question. And so what's happening here, whether it's this, if this actually did occur, these two men, they're men, we don't know if they're 18. They could be 22, they could be 24. Actually, people are coming across with no documentation. And they already know that by law, our welcoming law has already said, anyone who says that they're under the age of 21 gets public education. How do we not know that they could be 22? So I would say that the system absolutely has failed this young woman, as a, in addition to all the other undocumented women who've been consistently raped this entire time and could not speak to law enforcement because they feared these quotations. The only thing I, I agree with is that the, it's the system. Yes, the system, need, the system has been a problem for years for uh, immigrants trying to come into this, uh, this society for a better living. And, that, and that's the biggest problem. Talk about the system. Don't talk about Which, illegal aliens uh, causing all of the criminal still, things. And that's not yeah. true. I want to go to, I want to, go to a uh, meaningless board of education that does yes. absolutely nothing yes. and allows a system to run without any controls or checks or balances. Okay. Yes. But How the, do we know that these guys were in MS-13? Which yeah. causes Nobody more said problems were, in the county than anybody else. You're right. And, and the only go, thing that we do in this. this county that welcomes immigrants is is we don't stop people on the street and ask them okay. for papers, which is exactly what happened to my parents and grandparents in mm. Europe and in Russia, which mm. caused them to flee the country for their lives. Mm. At right. least we don't do that in Montgomery County. Mark, the Maryland Constitution requires that every elected official make, take the following oath of office. I do swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and that I will bear be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and laws thereof. Yet on the next day after this story broke, our Maryland House of Delegates voted to make the entire state of Maryland a sanctuary state that would shield illegal immigrants from federal immigration laws. What is wrong with our elected officials? Our elected officials in Maryland are trying to take Montgomery Cow policy and apply it on the rest of the state, what can only be described as a neo-confederacy. That is a, a policy of take of ignoring federal law and not applying it where you don't but agree don't with want, it. But our police don't go down the street and say, "Show me your papers." That's no, not actually that what. what no, that's but, not but, what's but, being but, suggested. But Sam, Sam, uh, that's uh, right. That's now. what you're saying. Uh, that's uh, a, uh, first now. Of all, now look, that's a red herring. Is, that is a red herring. No one do enforce the law. If somebody is found convicted of a crime, whether they are or are not aliens. We have, we have procedures in place. Yes. Now, in this particular case, we had one guy on the ICE list who probably shouldn't have been in the county, and we had another Me guy too. who was not on any list. That's what we're talking about. That's the only thing, and Montgomery County is not a sanctuary. Uh, Sam, I, I, I want to go, I wanna go to you about a couple of things. Now, first of all, you're wrong, because it was, just, it was just released that there were at least three detainers uh, issued for for illegal aliens in the in the judi in the in the ju in the court system, and Montgomery County released them. So you're 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 wrong that we're that we're cooperating with ICE and that we're doing things to protect our our, our country. But, but that's there a matter are, of enforcing the law, Casey. That's right. No, but the well, issue is the the, the system is over flooded. You're, the you're system right. is overflowing. That's the issue. But Sam, when I was we, 12, there were only 22 unlawful entrants. Now there are 300,000. So with just by virtue of volume, it's going to be difficult. That's what we've been talking about this entire time. Sam, we, th for the last 18 months, Every, every three months we have, we have talked about the, uh, the unaccompanied minors that have been flowing in across the border down south and the fact that Montgomery County and Prince George's County are two of, of the largest... Of many jurisdictions. Two of the many jurisdictions, are, but are two right. of the, the largest Top. recipients of these undocumented kids. So what we ought to do is at the border as these kids come across, no, they should we be ought turned. to take them and throw them in jail, no, Sam. lock them up, keep them there for months if not years, to make sure they can come into the country, no, Sam, that's ridiculous. Sam, Sam, what they should should do is turn them back at the border. We, we have <laughs> laws in this country that screens people who are allowed to come in and are not allowed to come in. The immigration laws are on the books. They haven't really changed in a long period of time. What people are talking about 
is having that screening process be followed and people who aren't entitled to come into the country get returned those who are permitted under the various requirements are allowed the screening occurred before they came to the state of maryland and montgomery county right but and, and an executive what's order screening? what's screening what Mark's talking well, about the executive order the executive order chose not to ignore the president's executive order uh, chose not to uh, enforce that law that's really at the heart of this no, particular at the, issue at the heart of, president president are we at talking the heart of it to no, be honest uh, at the, at, to be honest the no. issue is nafta the fact that we have degraded all countries south of the border and now everybody is straight up fleeing lawlessness and so some people have that norm where they can just violate just women, yes, violate men, women and take them for what they want. Where did you reach for NAFTA? What does no. NAFTA have it's, to do? It's degraded the entire first, economy first of, all, of, first, the entire, of, of the entire well, First of all, we need to be NAFTA. talking about the system. And we need to be talking about enforcing what we have and bringing enough enforcement with people to make sure that we're doing what we need to do that are on the books. That's what I've been saying. Now, because we have certain people coming in here that we did not catch that are criminals, I agree, they should not be here. Some of the people that we have that have been here that we have created crime, we, wrap we need to we ship gotta, them we out. Wrap you said it better than <laughs> gotta, I did. Yes. I absolutely agree with you. Well, the, the issue is, is that these two young, young individuals of whatever age did not belong here. They were stopped at the border, and because of the policies of Barack Obama, they were admitted into this country and allowed to migrate to our county. Our county council and our county executive bear responsibility for this. When we come back from this short break, why did Larry Hogan change his position on fracking ban? Can anyone fix the nation's health care system? And why are Democrats going to filibuster Neil Gorsuch's nomination to the Supreme Court? Stay tuned. And welcome back. In an announcement that stunned many political observers, Maryland Governor Larry Hogan announced that he was now supporting an extension of the ban on fracking in Western Maryland. Mark, this is a stunning reversal by the, the governor who championed his strong regulations to regulate the proper use of fracking. And will this hurt him with his core constituencies? Well, I have to confess that this one really caught me by surprise because I thought the administration had done a great job of coming up with regulations that would really be able to thread the needle of allowing fracking to go forward in Western Maryland and also satisfy the environmental concerns. Uh, I suspect there was a little bit of political calculus that said uh, he, he was going to end up with, a, with having to veto and having the veto overturned and decided to sort of pass this issue on to uh, some future year because it's really only a temporary uh, uh, delay. I'll, I'll tell you what's ironic, Mark. That, that, that morning of the announcement, he was on, he was on uh, the, the morning show on WMAL and he talked about his strong fracking regulations and the fact that, that banning fracking was a mistake. And then four hours later, he did the flip-flop. Sam, there are already signs that Hogan's popularity may be slipping. Will this reversal on fracking help him with Democratic Party voters in 2018? Yeah, we were talking about this very issue one or two show shows ago. And my opinion, for which I was called wrong, is that the folks in Western Maryland wanted, did not want fracking, or did want fracking, when they didn't want fracking. So from a political point of view, I think the governor looked at the electorate within the state of Maryland and decided that if he ticked off a few people in western Maryland, he'd do what was right for the, for the environment here within the state, protecting water, protecting livelihoods, protecting the tourist industry, protecting those of us who enjoy going to western Maryland for the environment and hiking oh, and skiing I, and trails. So yeah. I think the governor has improved his chances of re-election. And when you say down, you're talking down two or three points. Right. He's still in the 60s. What hurt the governor, what really hurt the governor, was today's action by the Senate and the Congress in trying to overthrow the Affordable Care Act. Sam, and we're going to get the Affordable Care Act. We'll with get that. to afford Liz, Hogan, wrap it up. We've got 30 seconds. <laughs> Hogan's going to score points, sadly, unfortunately, in reference to the sanctuary state issue. That's where, unfortunately, people will see, will have to determine are they going to go far left or are they going to try but to fracking find some won't be on the table no all right 
While millions, uh, we're going to get to Sam's favorite topic now. While millions of people have received health coverage through the Affordable Care Act, many millions more have felt the personal harm it has imposed on them and their families. The ACA has failed Americans who were promised more choices and more affordable coverages in the exchanges. Henry, Americans are frustrated as they see their premiums and deductibles rise and their choices of coverage is eliminated. Has the ACA been a success or been a failure? It depends on the individuals that are looking at it. Personally, I, I know of some people who uh, would not have um, health insurance if it's not for the ACL. Now, I, um, I know that there are some things there in the um, legislation that can be worked on, and I wish those individuals in Congress would work on them rather than trying to throw out the baby with the bathwater. My problem is, is basically, we need to come up with a system that will work for all. We have people that now have health care that didn't have it before. We have people now who have health insurance that the premiums are going up. I'm one of them. But I think health care for all is very important. And here in Montgomery County, yes, sir. because of today's action, there's 100,000 people that are not going to lose their much needed health care. You know, you know, first, of all, we, first, of, all, people, Casey. first of all, no bill has been passed to, to deprive anybody of their of their Casey, of those bills anybody of, of big, anybody of their insurance. But here's Casey. one thing we do know. We do know that there have been millions of people who cannot afford health insurance any longer because their premiums have tripled over the last four years. And They've they were, skyrocketed. And if Congress had any kind of common sense, especially starting with yes. Mr. Ryan, mm -hmm. they would have focused on those areas yes. where we could have made adjustments to the program. But instead, no, we're going to cancel everybody. But no, that's but not, a but that is a complete, that is a complete, that is not a risk pool that penalizes that guys is like Henry. Mark. That is a complete misstatement of what the program does. It oh. is, it, the, what it is, is trying to do what Obamacare What's proposed of providing more competition, of providing more alternatives, of mm -hmm. letting consumers make more choices. In too many parts of this country, there's only one choice because Obamacare has failed at that creating that marketplace. First of all, the Mark, it's the Affordable the wrong, Care Act, not Obamacare. Oh, and the on. labeling of Obamacare puts a taint on it. Whatever why? it's called. Why? It's universal health care. Why? Healthcare. Because, because I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because, because when, when, it, when it, it first it came out, the uh, Republicans went out during the off-season and uh, labeled it Obamacare so all the people will go against it. No, if you, you know, recall the history of that, this is an affordable history. But he asked, he asked me why is is did it, why was it called it, and I'm telling him why. I want to go to Liz on this to wrap it up. I would argue that today, with the Republicans withdrawing the bill, points out how complicated and convoluted health care actually is. I agree. My parents were physicians. I grew up at the National Medical Association conventions every summer. And so when it comes to being able to balance the diversity in economies and, and benefits of our country, we have to dig in deep to find better solutions. I agree. And the biggest lobbies against these changes that were proposed were well, the it, AMA and the Hospital Association and Nurses mm -hmm. Associations because they realized that it would further go to lessen care, increase costs, and increase the uninsurable. Right, so, so Your folks but, uh, are very this, happy this, that this went this down is the, the this, I'm taking the last word on this. I think the, Repu <laughs> I think the, Re I think yeah. the Republicans did the right thing in pulling this bill. They did the right, they did the thing that the Democrats should have done in, in 2008 90, and 2009 mm -hmm. because they, the Democrats rammed a terrible bill through the legislature and imposed without any support from Republicans, without any regard for, for a different point of view. At least the Republicans are going to try to do, make this right this time. All right. Our, Wasn't there a majority our last Republican? Our, what did he just say? Wasn't the Republicans well, really Here's what I said. I said, I said Barack, the Barack Obama. The Senate and the House, and they yeah. couldn't get the job done. Yeah. No. You know what it was? No, I'm, talking, you know what, I'm talking about Sam, Obama. You know, what, you know what it was? We had Sam? Republicans that were the majority. Republicans well, 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 don't walk we in lockstep. We had lock bipartisanship in 2000, on the Affordable Care Act. Gentlemen, we're going to our last topic. No votes. What? We're going to no, our last topic. Yes, from Republicans? Votes? Sure. Gentlemen, doing gentlemen Obamacare? Yes. Yes. at one time, the United States Senate <laughs> presented itself as being the body that was un unpersuaded by partisan political machinations. Now, as Minority Leader Senator Chuck Schumer threatens to filibuster the nomination of Court of Appeals Judge Neil Gorsuch, the Senate appears just as wild and craven as the House of Representatives. <laughs> mm. Mark, 
James Madison, writing in Federalist Paper Number 62, <laughs> praised the Senate as a limited body, which would therefore have greater fidelity to the body itself and less influenced by proceedings from the heart as opposed to the head. Should the Democrats in the Senate, who may be rightly upset about the treatment of Merrick Garland, put these differences aside and vote on the quality of the man, not follow their party? Well, they should, and, and I think that uh, that would be past precedent, but right now we've polarized the uh, Supreme Court confirmation process to such an extent that in all likelihood the Republican leadership is going to follow the example set by Harry Reid and go to the nuclear option and pass on a simple majority basis. Well, Liz, your, your view on what's going to happen with a nice Georgetown prep graduate like Neil Gorsuch. I think that's credit enough, actually, uh, quite I do frankly. Too, you know, I Montgomery County, uh, uh, born and bred. But, um, you know, this is an example of how polarized our system is, unfortunately. What you had said before is this, these bodies are supposed to be of the head and not the heart. And I would implore our leaders to be leaders. We have been without a full uh, Supreme Court for now a year, and we're replacing a conservative with a conservative. I would argue, if you're going to fight, leave it for when, unfortunately, and some of the other elder state um, uh, jurists might step down in the next year. Well, you know, I'm looking at one thing. The boys in Congress are not playing together. It happened with Garland. You, 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 look what happened. You know, rather than have a hearing, they knocked it out, period. <laughs> nice okay? Sweet. Now, the other part, uh, uh, other person that does not have the basketball say, I'm not going to play. So I am going to do the same thing. Tip it's ridic yeah, Obama it's Obama ridiculous. No, no. Instead of, instead of looking at the Act. individual as individuals and voting on that, no. They, they're going to fight back and forth, which is ridiculous. Well, and wasting time and not and serving the public. The yes. so solution and this guy really should is, be approved and he will be approved. The solution really yeah, is to have more women in, in Congress. That's oh, just is that I'm right? Saying. Because the boys uh -huh. aren't playing well together? <laughs> exactly. Is, is, uh -huh. that, is that it? Did we, we demonstrate that <laughs> yeah. on the show tonight? Same. Same. <laughs> I, I Stay think tuned <laughs> for parting shots when we come back. And now with parting shots, Henry Halestock. I want to congratulate the uh, Kappa Youth and Community Outreach Foundation for another year for scholarships that they're going to award on May 7th. And I look forward to uh, them working and bringing in some of the Montgomery County students for that award. Thank you. Thank you, Henry. Sam Statlin, your parting shot. A real, real big shout out and congratulations to fellow pa panelist Rich Parsons whose children, Michelle and Mike, oh, yeah. just won the 2017 World Dance Championships. What oh. a huge, huge Absolutely. accomplishment. Wow. A lot of work goes into that. Mm -hmm. Mark yeah. Unkefer, your party Casey, shot. I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that in the last week, the uh, construction work has ended on the Bethesda escalator. Uh, this was a topic near and dear to my wife's heart with her knees going as she would commute down there. Uh, I noticed that I was reading the story that it is the second longest escalator in the Western Hemisphere, the longest being in wheat. But after years of effort, it has finally been completed. Well, thank you, Mark. Ms. Matori, your party shot. I think we all, having gone through so much in the last few months, are looking forward to spring. I am going to do a shout out to the cherry blossoms, um, whether it's here or in Kenwood um, or uh, downtown DC. I think everybody should take a moment in the next week or two to enjoy nature and take a breath. And I want to thank all of you. I know this was sometimes a spirited debate tonight. And we. we well, you look we, at me, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, this one over here, especially, uh, got under my skin. I, I'm going to have to take it out on the, go the golf course. In any event, I want uh, the fact is that we have different opinions. We can express them strongly. But at the end, we're able to, to work together uh, and uh, be friends. So I want to thank you for being here tonight. I want to thank the audience for tuning in. These are some tough topics we talked about tonight that affect our community and affect our lives. And that's why 21 This Week is on the air. So for 21 This Week, I'm Casey Aiken. 